Good morning, everyone. We're just waiting till the top of the hour to get started. Um, so if you, um, as people join in, um, oh, we've still got a couple more attendees coming in. Um, we'll get ready to get going. Hello everyone, um, I'm Christine Lavoy, a Senior Client Account Manager at IFS, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm excited to be joined by IFS partner Omnibyte, and they're going to discuss today how ProForms can simplify your reporting needs and data capture needs in the field. With that, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Mike, who can introduce the team. All right, thanks. Well, good morning, or I should say early good afternoon to everyone. Again, this is Mike Noiser. I'm just going to start a little advanced. We're going to have a brief PowerPoint intro, and then we're going to actually get into the product right away. So we'll keep it moving along pretty nicely for all the attendees. So uh, joining us today from our team is Jake. Jake is our staff engineer, and then Cameron, technical consultant, and myself, a partner. Uh, just a little background for folks. Um, myself, I actually am a former metrics uh, employee. That's many moons ago before they were acquired by IFS. So familiar with the IFS uh, product and even Christine, I've worked with uh, some of the uh, staff that are currently at IFS. So that's a great legacy at that company. So uh, today's agenda, just brief intros as far as who's Omnibyte. We'll talk about Forms Pro Smart Mobile Forms for IFS. And then why Forms Pro uh, for IFS? Why would you use it? What are some really good use cases that we'll go through and some of those needs? And then we'll go right into the product itself. So a little bit about Omnibyte. Omnibyte is a young but rapidly growing company. We are based out of beautiful Fargo, North Dakota and uh, Go Bison. Uh, we are actually right outside the North Dakota or on the North Dakota State University campus. Um, we are approximately five years old and our background and expertise comes from field service. So I'm one of the partners, but the uh, partners and then our team has extensive field service technology and software backgrounds. Uh, myself included, we've got people ranging from years to decades of experience in field service, but also in technology and applications. So our company is all about mobile applications and professional services. That's our singular focus in field service. We are an IFS FSM authorized channel partner, and we also are building an IFS FSM practice. So what that means is we are definitely um, investing in our, our knowledge and staff to be trained to market, sell, implement, and service IFS FSM clients. And we are involved in projects as we speak. So just a little bit more about our relationship with IFS. Again, we are an authorized channel partner, so we can resell their IFS FSM, which you folks are already on, but we also have a relationship with IFS, with our Forms Pro solution. We have a product and resell agreement. That means is IFS can actually sell our product, and they have done so um, in opportunities, and then we just service the account behind the scenes, but we also sell our product direct to IFS clients as well. So we always call it customer choice. That's the most important thing, is how do customers want to do business? So now we're gonna get into a brief intro of Forms Pro itself. 
And uh, as Christine set up the meeting, we really appreciate the opportunity to be you know, with you folks today and spend a little time. This is about taking forms and forms, a lot of paper out there surprisingly yet folks in the field, and that can be for various reasons, but taking any type of a form and it could be paper-based and it could be multi-pages. We've even taken things or I'm seeing things that look very complex, like you see on the screen here, but could be several, several pages, 12 pages, even more. But then we've also have seen a lot of electronic documents in fillable PDFs, Excel, and Word. Well, really what our product is about is digitizing this and then making them forms in our product. Now the value proposition and one of the reasons why clients like using our product, especially for your mobile workers, is because they want to get away from a, how a form looks. This is a very difficult thing to navigate on a tablet or say smartphone. So our value is, is that you can make very simple, easy to use forms that can have an output that looks like this, but make it simple for your mobile field workers. Okay. Now, next thing, this is just a high level. What is the solution? What is it? There is an admin site designer, and this is a no code product, meaning you're not programming and then deploying. This is really based for admin business admin people to be able to actually create forms, publish forms, edit forms, et cetera. So low IT overhead. If there's any IT ever involved, it's usually initially upfront if you wanna have some mapping done to products like IFS, FSM, ERP or EAM or other business solutions in your company. Our product is designed with an open API for integration. So once forms are created in the admin site and they're published, and or mapped and integrated to your business software, then obviously they can be launched on their own from our mobile app or launched from FSM Mobile, which you will see today. Our product works on iOS, Android, Windows 10 devices, and you can also uh, use it with familiar browsers. So this is very common that we see, say in the back office or within companies, where people want to use forms throughout the organization and simply open up a browser and then use forms, say it could be for HR, what have you. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Folks, uh, who is everyone on the call, please, by all means, uh, Christine's going to be monitoring questions, et cetera. Feel free, we like to have a little interaction, obviously when we're having meetings, presentations, but feel free to ask as we go along here too. So why forms for, for IFS? One of the things that we are definitely seeing in field service is we do know the product and we are very familiar with IFS surveys and steps or checklists in the product. Sometimes that is not enough. So that's really where you might need a form solution. So no cloning form solution. And then you might want to have products and we will show you this today in some of the forms that we have built. A table of contents for easy jump tos. You see over on the right, this is just a screenshot, but I'm going to show you how you can create a table of contents with headers very, very easily. So your mobile workers can easily jump in and out of the app. It works online, offline. They come into the app and they might say, oh, I'm at this part of my inspection or I'm doing this type of data logging against this piece of capital equipment. They can easily just jump to it and then continue their work. Again, it's extensive data inputs. We know this is going on in the field today uh, for inspection work. It can be against you know, capital equipment or it could be a safety inspection and more. We have seen organizations that must review and record multiple data inputs. So you wanna make this fast and efficient for the field workers. Conditional logic, that's another thing we're gonna be presenting to you today. When you answer questions, can those questions then open up additional questions based upon responses? So we call that basically, you know, forms within forms. So if you answer a yes, no, or any type of input question, open up forms based upon the response. So we've seen a lot of clients consolidate many, many forms into very few or a form with conditional logic in our product. Dynamic tables, we're gonna show you that as well. How can you easily just add additional readings as needed against equipment? Because we know this, every piece of equipment, you know, if you're servicing them, are different. You might have to take three rows of readings for one piece of equipment, but five for another. Well, you want something that's very dynamic that can be adjusted based upon the equipment that you're actually inspecting. 
And then of course we have other features too, like last inspections, readings and benchmarks. What that means is in the field today, when uh, technicians go and they do inspection work, et cetera, sometimes they wanna see their last readings and only then change what needs to be changed so they can continue their work. So that makes, again, field service much more efficient versus then data recording constantly. And then we also have what's called parent-child link forms. So if a form gets submitted, we can actually launch children forms all associated to that original parent form. So that might come in handy, say, for job safety inspections when a hazard is identified or there's a spillage or a safety violation, et cetera. Form gets submitted, it can actually populate another form from the data in the form and assign another form to another user for follow-up. Now, of course, easy formatting. We still say the name of the game, it's gotta be easy for everyone that uses a mobile app to use, otherwise the adoption is not there. So finally, the last point we always like to say about our product, it's really rapid deployment, training and adopt, adoption. So our product typically in an environment, uh, we've done this with other IFS clients, we can literally remotely install in hours into a test environment. And then if there's some mapping that would be done, say to your business software, IFS, FSM, et cetera, that's hours, days, things. This is not a week, months type deployment type product. So very easy to stand up, very easy to create forms, very easy to deploy. All right, so here's some uh, just use cases. We've got one more slide for this and we're gonna jump into the product folks. So again, we always say this product can be used across the organization. You can have your internal users, of course, in the organization and external users, and it's designed to work across business software. So if you think about this, pulling data into forms, which you're going to see today on the demonstration, so that the technician can just review the information and then only record or change what needs to be changed. That's really the name of the game too for efficiency. So field service, we typically see a lot of scenarios. You can see with my little pointer, you know, health safety environment concerns or job safety. Of course, there's data, you know, inspections, uh, commissioning of startups, compliance, restarting the business. That's another thing that's going on across the world right now is how do you restart the business? Because some industries have literally had to shut down or not had had access to their customers. So there's you know lots of different scenarios, use cases for that. Of course, COVID-19 is a very real, very unknown what's going to happen in the future. We've seen more and more clients use our product for simple COVID-19 reporting, not just across, say, field te technicians, but across their organization. Then we have scenarios for manufacturing, sales and marketing, finance, human resources. And again, we've seen you know, very simple things like timesheets and work orders for manufacturing, sales and marketing could be quotes, you know, leads, and then even in finance, we can again see timesheets, time and expense reporting, and then things like I said, human resources could be a COVID-19 across the organization, PTO requests, something very, very simple that we've seen our product used for. So here's just a little bit of some use cases. Um, you know, I'd say primarily they're in the mechanical contracting space, but our product goes across industries. But uh, some clients we want to reference to with IFS, FSM, ACO Engineered Systems, they are on the West Coast. They're already using our product. Uh, they're a commercial contractor. Uh, they are going live with IFS, FSM, and this is going to be mobile that they're using. So IFSM mobile launching forms based upon particular pieces of equipment. So they do a lot of HVAC work. So they might be working on say a chiller, which in their world is uh, very common. And that would launch say a chiller form, or if it's a rooftop unit form, et cetera. We have the ability to go from FSM mobile, launch a particular form based upon a request ID, a task or other parameters to open a specific form. Which again, that's what most clients are looking for. Brent, uh, this is a good example. They're down in Texas, uh, across the state, uh, 12 locations. But what's really interesting about them is they have multi-division division usage as well in their service division, but health, safety, and environment division is a very big um, organization. They've had 900 users just in that division alone. But then they're also using our product 
across their organization for all forms, including COVID, simple PTO requests, even onboarding when they have new employees. They can generate with HR, here's the onboarding checklist for this type of employee. Here's the things that they should get from the organization. And then here's an organization in um, Australia, uh, 500 users on our product. Actually, it's gonna be going up to 800 users. So just a little pause there. Any comments or questions at this point? Okay. All right, folks, I am going to bring in our designer now. And let me know if everybody can see Forms Pro. It should just be kind of a wide open white space. Um, yes, that is oh. showing. Okay, thanks, Christine. So first thing I wanna point out is you'll notice we've got the IFS colors. Our product can be configured to look like the IFS FSM applications. Not exactly, but coloring, because one of the other things that you want, obviously, for your mobile workforce is the appearance that it's really the same product. So it flows easily, kind of similar look and feel to it, et cetera. So we are able to do that. You're able to do that with uh, even your brand. If you want to have a particular brand out in the field, et cetera, you could do that as well. So this is just the first look at our product. What I'm going to also do is shut down this navigation on the left side, but these are our folders. You can create unlimited folders in our product for forms for say divisions, or they could be for departments or user roles. The thinking is, is you create forms, but you create forms for specific users, say all employees, techs, certain types of techs, et cetera. Okay, I'm just gonna close that out and expand that so you can see it. So basically what we have right in front of us is, I like to call it, it's a blank slate of paper. <laughs> so if uh, you've used Microsoft Office products, you can build forms in our product. And we're really proud of that because we've got even uh, lots of interns that have worked at our organization. And this takes minimal learning curve and they're able to actually create forms, publish forms and reports that actual clients use, which is really cool. So what I've done is I've created an IFS template. What you can do is create the form names that are common for your terminology in your company. You can have a form description. You can even add more to that and then just save it to the folder that you like. So now what I'm gonna do is just go through some what I call basics of forms creation. So we have very simple formatting, but it's very powerful, which is great. You can do auto incre incrementing numbering in our products, but usually with our you know, relationship with IFS FSM, you would be pulling information out of that product into a form. So I won't spend any time on the auto incrementing on numbering. Now embedded images. We have um, worked with a number of clients that actually have to have schematics that they have to deploy into a form that their technicians can readily see. So you can embed images if needed. Now the next thing is headers. Now I mentioned table of contents before and you're gonna be seeing this in our product. Headers are a very powerful aspect of our solution that you can take up or break up a very, very long form into natural sections. So I'm gonna just drop in a bunch of headers. And folks, you can see this is a drag and drop or click product, okay? So I just in, dragged in or yeah, dragged <laughs> into the uh, form itself. Now I'm gonna actually go in and edit it. So as you can see with our inputs and any type of formatting, you can change the labels. So I'm gonna call this PPE, personal protection equipment. You can see that you can change the label size, you can bold, italicize, underline, and color formatting that you need. Then you can also justify the product as well. So let's just start there. So I've got that basically for our headers. I'm also gonna just change some of these other headers for the demonstration purposes right now as well. Let's call this readings. And this one will be, I'm gonna just call it signatures. Good news, you can see the spell check is working in the product. So now I've just created three natural sections that you'll see when I actually start viewing this uh, as far as a form. Now those are habits. Now we do have page breaks. Page breaks are another way that you can break up a long form, but 
again, it's really a preference style as far as what do you like to use when you build your forms. And I'll, sh I'll be showing you some of those other features. And then we've got paragraph information. Now, paragraph information, if you've got standard operating procedures or you need to have, let's just say, more verbiage on a form, I'm just going to copy something from another screen. I'm going to open this up. And we've got an HTML editor here. You can basically copy existing text and paste it in. It'll keep the formatting. So let's do that. So once again, you can have some something very simple like standard operating procedures, drop in some extended text that you might need for a particular form if needed. All right. So let's go back to like a PPE example. So this is our basic formatting, folks. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it gives you a lot of power in very few tools, very simple to use. So now what I'm going to do is start reviewing our inputs. So this is the data capture points. Now, when I say data captures, the inputs can be, it's a form that you could create and you can enter data, or if it's a, a you want to view the last inspection, you can pull history information into inputs as well. So don't think of this as, Oh my gosh, a lot, always constantly data entering, as we do have the ability to show you last readings and more. What I'm going to do is, this will make sense, I'm going to go into here and drag in a checkbox. And now let's, I'm going to do some more copying and pasting from another screen, folks. Whoops. Just clicked. Let me get out of there. And I'm going to copy and paste in some PPE. From out the screen, let's see. So I'm going to go in and edit. Now, any input you can make required or not required, I'm going to do call this a PPE review. And I'm going to just paste a list in. Here's some other features just to make you aware. We got to show select all checkbox, add text field to last option. So lots of formatting capabilities in our product. And let me move this and let's save. All right. So what I'm going to do, for, you can't really break our, our product, but what I'm going to do, I just show you some simple formatting that we really don't need to take advantage of. I'm going to delete that and let's save. And I'm going to start previewing the form for you. Okay. So here is our, what we call really our viewer emulator. So it just gives you the opportunity to show a form as you're building it. You can't test all the features like signatures and photo attachments, but it will give you a sense of how the, the form actually looks as you're building it. So here's the header that we dropped in. Here is a task list I just copied and pasted in. You can do a select all. And again, you can see I made it mandatory. So this would be a form that you cannot submit unless you did a PPE review, which we're seeing more and more out in the field. PPP uh, or safety checks first before any service work gets done. Okay. Now it's showing in tablet mode, but you can toggle that to phone mode as well. All right. And then let's just do one more thing that we're seeing that's very, very common is date and time stamping. So we've got just date stamping, but date and time stamping. Again, we're seeing more and more requirements that uh, mobile field workers have to do a, a safety review first and then do a date and time stamp and even a signature. So I'm just going to drop that in underneath and make that required as well. All right. So stop there. Now we'll go into some of the other functions as far as what we do for inputs. You can see that we capture GPS coordinates, image or photo captures. So you can place these throughout a form in unlimited. We've got long text lookups that you'll see in some of the forms that we're gonna be demonstrating to you today. Number capabilities, radio buttons, select signatures, text and time. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate some of these inputs 
into some of more of our what we call our advanced features. We do have the ability to do calculated fields in forms. So if you are taking number readings, it could be say a temperature and it could be a pressure reading and or more, multiple number captures, you could have formulas that actually create then the output of what's the result. But, uh, we've seen flow analysis in pipes, we've seen pressure readings, uh, capacity, all these other things that are typically needed in the field when techs are recording information. So uh, we've also got conditional fields, which I'm going to be showing you next, but I'm going to first start with dynamic tables. Let's do this. So we have two different types of tables in our product. One is dynamic. You build a table that you can add multiple rows dynamically in the product as needed, or we have static tables. You actually build a rows and columns, and it's basically as is. So I'm going to focus today on the dynamic nature of our product. So first thing I'm going to do is create a column. Now what you can do in a table, any of our inputs can be dropped into a cell. So I'm going to use a select and then let's go in for edit. So Monday. Sunday. Okay, now here's how you can start adding other columns. You can copy a column, you can insert a column. So let's do this. Now I'm going to call this date. And let's just put in our date field. You can see this is alphabetized, so it's easier for the person building forms, obviously, to use. And now let's insert another column and let's call it work type. And let's do a radio button. I'm going to just call this, is it service work, service job? Okay. Let's insert another column. And let's put hours worked. And that's going to be a number field. Now we've got a lot of number formatting capabilities in our product too. So I'm going to add some rules. So you can see you can drop in units of measure. So again, is it a temperature? Is it a pressure? What have you? Well, let's put in some formatting. Equals one. I'm going to say that's yellow equals two, I'm going to say green. So we have more and more requests that you want to give mobile workers an indicator, a visual indicator of values, or if it's in, within ranges at times. So that's why I'm putting some formatting rules in to show you. And we can also show what we call benchmarks too. Benchmarks will say, what are the expected reading ranges? And let's just put in four and make this red. Okay, now you can see that it's giving us a visual clue that we've got some uh, number formatting as well. Now, one thing I didn't do with this dynamic table, let me just save this first. I'm going to put in here uh, automatic summing of the table itself. So, reading, let's change the label, and let's also show a summary row. Okay, just I'm going to put two more columns in and show you how we're doing. So this is we're on our way to almost having a form done. So ours worked. Now I can say let's copy the column, and now let's call this ours traveled. I do love spell check. And then finally, let's put in one more column. And let's just call this summary. And we're going to do a calculated field. So let's do this. And we're just going to do some basics.
All right, now we're going to go back into the previewer. We've already seen this information. Continuing to build our form. Now we're at our table. So I did add a date and timestamp. So a click again, it's going to look different on the app itself. But now what we've done is we've created a dynamic table. So what day is it? Today is Tuesday. What's the date? What type of work was being done? Service again, this is these are things that could be coming in from IFS, FSM mobile, of course. We just wanted to give you a sample of things that we can do. Now here comes the visual indicators. Hours worked. I said if it was one, give us a yellow. Hours traveled. Let's make that one. Now you can see the sum sum and let's drop down a little bit further. And here we've got a summary of two. Now this is why we say this is dynamic. So now let's say that a scenario, a typical use case, field workers out there says, I have to take some more readings and record other things again. So they could say, okay, here's a like the second reading. And now let's just do like a two. Two is fine, let's just say three. Three is in range. And you can see that summing. And here we go again. Red's bad. Let's put four here. Okay. So now this that's going across in a table. So again, we typically have seen two. Well, this is in tablet mode. If we're going form, form mode, well, people aren't going to want to scroll. So that's where we do have the ability to flip the tables, going from horizontal view to a vertical view. So then it's much easy, easier for your mobile workers then to review and or record the data. Okay. All right. Next, I'm going to show what we call our conditional logic. So let's just drop in some more information. I'm going to just take a radio button. And let's just call this a hazard. Any hazards identified. And let's make this real simple. Could be any type of an input too, any type of question. Yes, no. Okay, now what I'm going to put in is conditional field underneath it. So this is how we start building what we like to say forms within forms or conditional logic. So let's put in a rule. Any hazard identified is equal to yes. Now we've got a rule. So what should we do? Um, let's do. Let's drop that in. Identify P, identify hazard. And this could be uh, weather. It could be whatever you deem it to be. And it, again, it doesn't have to be in this format. Just trying to give you a flavor for it. And let's save. And this is where you can put unlimited inputs. So we have seen many clients put forms within forms. So tables within tables, I'm sorry, tables within these sections, et cetera, anything can get exposed then by the answer of that, that condition. So now if we preview again, let's just drop down. You can see here, any hazards identified? No, nothing gets open. We say yes. Identify hazard. Okay. So the other capability we do have, you can do again conditional logic and nested conditional logic. So if there was a weather-related incident, etc., it could then actually be another basis to open up additional conditional logic and questions. So that's where you get this forms within forms, and you can build very, very complicated use case and work stream scenarios. For your business needs. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Any 
comments or questions, Christine? Not so far, but I'm going to unmute everyone um, okay. because um, nobody's typed any questions in the chat window. So if you, if something comes up, feel free to unmute yourself and ask um, Mike any questions. Sounds good. Okay, thank you. Now signatures, folks. I get lots of different work streams, use cases for signatures that we've seen. We've seen companies build forms for you. There's a supervisor and a crew where the supervisor reviews a, let's just say, a safety form with all the crew members and they have to sign off. So you could literally have multiple signatures in one form. It could be the supervisor's signature, it could be the crew members, et cetera. And then we've got this locking capability. Once, it, once someone re puts information in, et cetera, and signs, it's, we could make it lock the form. So it can be unlimited signatures, different processes and work streams there too. So, you know, we typically have seen technicians sign off, have customers review and more. So just wanted to share that with you as well. So we could say this is a customer, but and then technician. Okay, so we'll stop here. Now we've got, like I said, lots of different capabilities. We do have the ability to um, not only lock forms, but link. So you could actually have links that you might want to go to safety form, not safety, forms, but um, OSHA, OEM manuals, et cetera. You could actually have links within forms that you click on the link and then your mobile users could be taken, say, to a secure site where you might have documentation. Lots of other things that we can do, but I'm basically going to stop there with some of the actions and containers. Uh, again, on the top ribbon, we've got more features that we're not going to be really getting into in our time with everyone today. But you can, you know, copy and edit forms. You can set default settings on forms as far as the look and feel, like what colors do you want to use, fonts, all those good things. Emails, we do have the capability of emailing once a form is submitted. It could be to your customers. It could be to internal people as well. It could go to multiple um, different organizations based upon one form submission. We do have the capability of generating multiple reports to go to different people or different, let's just say, organizations from one form submission. We do have workflow too, but not to be confusing, IFS. FSM has workflow, so but we do have some as well. We have roles, like I said, you assign forms to roles or you open up forms from say IFSF, IFS, FSM mobile based upon the type of work you're doing, which is great. And we do have linking. So I'm going to stop here. And now the next thing that we're going to transition into is going to have Cameron actually present and show you a demonstration of IFS FSM integration with Forms Pro. So Cameron, I'm going to make you presenter now. Alrighty. So we're seeing a black car. Yep, sorry, give me one second. I have a couple monitors open. You guys okay. able to see that at the moment? Now we are on the request screen. All right, perfect. I apologize about that. Okay, so we're just gonna do a, a nice simple demo that kind of demonstrates how our Forms Pro mobile application can tie in with both AIFS FSM back office as well as the FSM mobile client. So to kind of start things off, we're gonna start in the back office here and kind of demonstrate what we'll be um, messing with today. So we have the request screen open. We're currently looking at 6780 as you can see here. Um, it's assigned to Aerotech and they're based out of Milwaukee just so you can kind of see some of the basic information associated with this request. Um, one other important piece of information is we actually are using a request that has multiple products associated with it. So this is important because we'll actually give users the ability to choose from these when we're actually looking at the information within Forms Pro. Um, and if we pop over to tasks as well, you can see that I did go ahead and create a task and assign it specifically to our demo user, which is the one we'll be using on the mobile application in a moment here. Okay, so from here I'll go ahead and bring up our tablet. 
Alrighty. And from here, you can see we're in the FSM mobile application just on the home screen. So as the technician would, would typically do, you can navigate to, the, to your jobs and you can see that we have a couple tasks associated to us. Um, the top one right here, um, number 320, as you can see, it's also tied to Aerotech and that is gonna be connected to that same request that we just had open on the screen there before. Um, as you scroll down, we will see the addition of a new button on the bottom here. So you can see this view form button right there. That was actually created using the FSM mobile designer. So we have actually go, gone ahead and added that button on there. Um, the text on it is configurable and it is currently set up to launch a form in Forms Pro dynamically based on information from this task. So in this specific situation, we actually have it opening it based on that type of task up top there. So as this is a break fix task, it's actually going to go ahead and open one of our demo forms. Um, a big important thing to hit on is the fact that we can actually configure that button to launch a form based on any piece of information. So if you want it, want it to launch a specific form for a single customer, if you want to launch a specific form for you know, any type of task, you can do that and it's nice and easily configurable. Um, so from there, I'll go ahead and uh, click on that view form button. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring us straight to Forms Pro and it's actually going to go ahead and open that, <clears throat> open that form up directly for us. So as you can see, we actually have a couple pieces of information that are already populated on this form. So all of that data that's already displayed on the form was actually taken directly from the FSM back office and pushed right into our form to save us some time. So as you can see, it's, it has our uh, request 678 as well as the customer that's associated with it. And all of that, as you can see, does match up with what we saw in the back office earlier. Um, from there, I'll go ahead and fill in a couple pieces of information so you can kind of see how everything plays around. So we have the time and date stamp, we have our simple radio boxes. And as I scroll down here, you can see we have this equipment tab or equipment field, which is currently blank. So as I mentioned earlier, it's actually grabbing those models from, from a request and we're able to choose any of those four that are associated with the request. So you're not having to worry about choosing from every single possible one. It's only grabbing our relevant data. So when I go ahead and select one of those, it actually populates the rest of the relevant fields with the information tied to that piece of equipment. Um, from there, I'll scroll down a little bit so we can demonstrate some other pieces of data entry. So uh, right here in the center, as Mike showed earlier, we do have those dynamic tables. So I will go ahead and change the display view so we can go from horizontal to vertical, make it a little bit easier for everyone to read. And so as you can see here, we can go ahead and enter in some information. I'll just do some template data here. And on the bottom here, we do have an actual, we actually have a look up in here. So within this table, we have the ability to look up pieces of information. So for example, this was based around refrigerant. If we wanted to have the technician be able to look up a specific type of refrigerant, we can do that. So they can go ahead and click on that search bar and, and go ahead and enter in one of those, <clears throat> one of those pieces of data from that lookup. And then as he said, as we said before, it is dynamic. So if they have multiple pieces of information that would be entered, entered on there, you can simply click the plus button and it will add another row for us. Or if you need to get rid of it, you can always go back and get rid of that extraneous row. All right, from there, I'll scroll down a little bit more. And as you can see, the red, the red highlight, the uh, leak found option here, this is gonna demonstrate some of our conditional logic. So as Mike did demonstrate before, you know, if you're clicking no on that leak found, you can simply continue on with your form as there's no other information that's needed. But in the situation that they were to click yes, you'll actually be prompted with additional fields here. So you found a leak, we need, to, we need to know where that leak was, when it was found, some other information that would not be required in other situations. So we can go ahead and enter in some of that here. And as we scroll down a little farther, you can see we have another conditional field. Um, important thing to hit on is this is actually within that first field. So if you would have said no to seeing a leak, you wouldn't even be prompted with a second request or the second accidental release down here. So same thing with um, no, you won't see any additional data, but clicking yes, it will actually pop us up with a second field that we can enter that data into. So this is very useful since it allows, it'll basically allow you to put multiple forms within the same form as opposed to having to link to an external one. So it allows for you to put a lot of that data in one place without having it be too confusing or overwhelming. All right, and another useful piece of information. So let's say that's everything we needed to fill out. We just want to jump straight to the end of the to the end of the form. We want to jump straight to the signatures and get everything filled out. 
So we have this table of contents option up in the top right corner, which actually gives us the ability to jump to any of those headers as Mike had mentioned earlier. So since we're all done, we just want to go to the signatures and finish things up. I can click on that and it'll actually bring us right down to the bottom of the form and allow us to enter that data. Um, one other thing in the top right corner before we get too far, I will actually demonstrate as well. We have a high contrast option, so you can toggle that on and off <clears throat> and allow your technician to be able to view their form in a lower highlight environment. And as we move down, we'll get some last piece of information filled out in here. So we do have that photos field as well. So as we move down here, a technician does have the option to either take photos directly on their device of any relevant machinery or information that need to include on there. And they can also take photos directly from their gallery if they have device photos that have already been saved. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate actually taking a physical photo here. So for example, if they have a piece of machinery off in the distance they need to document, they can take a photo of it directly, confirm that it's what the photo they want to use, and it'll actually attach it onto the form here. Um, another big piece of information is we do actually have the option to annotate them as well. So if there's a specific piece of information on this on this piece of equipment we need to highlight, so let's say this display needs to be replaced, we can highlight it, circle it, draw it right onto the form, anything like that, we can actually do directly onto that photo here. And saving it does actually save it directly onto the photo as well. And you can also add a caption and add any relevant information you may need to tie into that as well. Um, moving downwards, we also have that signature field that we previously showed, so now you can actually see it utilized. Upon accepting it, it will just throw it straight onto the form, it will actually be delayed, or will be displayed on the actual report once it is submitted as well, and that will remain visible here. Um, last piece of information before we go ahead and submit this is at the very bottom we also have this emails field. So in this field, you're able to have a form set to be emailed to a specific email upon every submission. You can also create optional ones as well. So for example, if I want to have this form submit emailed to myself once I submit it, I can simply check that box there and it will actually email me a copy of it as well. Um, important to note that we can pull emails based on the user so we can have any set of emails that will pop up as an option in the bottom here. Um, from there, I'll go ahead and submit it, and then we can demonstrate where this data is actually being pushed off to back in uh, the back office. And as you can see, up upon submission there, it did actually go ahead and directly open us back to our FSM mobile client, so you don't have to worry about jumping between applications or anything. All right, so back in our back office here, we have roughly two areas we want to demonstrate where that data actually got pushed to. So primarily, we have actually added a new a new tab onto the tab display on the bottom here titled form data. So if we navigate to that field, you're able to see there's currently no data in here, nothing to display. But uh, upon hitting refresh, it will actually grab that data we submitted from that form. So these are just some template de some template data um, to demonstrate that we can bring information back into the back office. However, any piece of information that has been filled out on that form can be sent to the back office, can be added to tables, displays, anything like that. So it's important to note that anything entered on that form can be sent into the back office as well. These are just some demo data we chose to send back. But so you can see, for example, the model, the username, as well as, you know, did they find an act, did they find a leak? Was there an accidental release? All that information can be sent here. Um, last thing in back office is we do also have it attached the PDF of that report. So upon submission, it will become attached to the request and they can simply open up that report directly if they want to view what's view anything on that submission. So you can see the data we entered in the table. We can scroll down, we can see the photo directly and we can see the customer signature there as well. One other important piece of information is we can also have photos be directly uploaded to the attachments as well if that is something that is preferred as opposed to just having it on the uh, report there. So um, if there's no further questions, that'll bring it to a close, our little demo to uh, show how everything plays together here. Great. So, so Cameron, can you, oh, was there a question? Yes. Uh, so on your attachments there, you click the ID number and it pulled up the PDF with the picture attached to it? Yep. Did so I see that actually, correctly? Yep, so it'll bring up, it's actually our, our, the full report. So it's all of the information on that form that we filled out, and it does have the 
image attached at the bottom there, we can also have it attached separately. So if they wanted to just be able to access that picture directly, we can do that as well. All right. Any other questions, folks? So uh, uh, real quick, one other thing. Uh, so can somebody give me a call after this meeting? Because this is not what I'm seeing on the tool they're developing for, for our company. And I'm just wondering if they're not using Omnibytes. I thought they were because I heard them talk about it quite a bit. Um, let, it, let me make sure we follow up with you. Yep. I'll, I've got that. Mike, I'll get you that information. Okay, very good. Yep, happy, happy to follow up with you today. Not, not a problem. Okay. okay, thank you. You bet. So folks, before we leave the product, we just got a little bit of wrap up, but this is your time yet. We still have uh, 10 minutes to we be respectful of everyone's um, hour today. Any other questions about the product while we're there? Yeah, can, uh, when you were looking at the asset data that was pulled in, is that editable and can it write back to your master data? Or is there a process around that? So um, you're referring to the data I have on the screen at the moment, correct? Well, when it showed up on the mobile, so if the, if the serial number or something was incorrect. Okay, so currently the way that we have it set up is um, it's just displaying the data from the back office. Um, in there, it's not currently set to update. So if you can swap data that's entered in there, but it will not update back office unless you want it configured that way. So currently it's not set up to do that, although it is something that can be done. Yeah, I think okay. the question, Cam, is can we do it? And the answer is, yeah, it wasn't part of the demo, but if you had an incorrect serial number, you'd be able to change that. Okay, thanks. Right. Any other questions? Otherwise, what we'll do just for a wrap up, just to our contact information, because Christine is going to make the overview available. So, Kim, you want to um, actually make me the presenter again, please? And let's see if I can get. Um, bear with me for a second here. Looks like it's not giving you control. Um, there we go. Yeah, so and for anybody that's, um, you know, watching, if there's somebody else you want to share in your organization, um, this will be posted on the webcast channel this afternoon, the FSM 6 webcast channel. So encourage others to watch it too. Great. And what we'll do, folks, too, uh, we had one wrap-up slide. It was our contact information, but we'll make sure, as Christina shared, we'll make sure that you've got our contact information as well. Let me see if we can grab that now. It just came over. Is it showing how it went to yep. engage on the bike? Okay. So uh, we will have this, but uh, we'll definitely follow up and... If there's any other comments or questions at sales at Omnibyte, here is my contact information. We also have some things on our website as well relative to Forms Pro and Forms Pro for IFS too. So with that said, uh, number one, thank you to all of the attendees uh, from IFS customers. And of course, IFS, Christine, thank you. Any other comments or questions, folks? Happy to stay on as long as you'd like. Just, okay. uh, this is uh, Jim Shive here. I'm just curious as to what, how much is installed on the FSM uh, system itself? Because obviously on the screen you showed in the, in the uh, back office client, you had the extra tab. Are there routines, uh, database tables? You know, how much, how, much, how much effort is it to get it installed onto FSM, into FSM or integrated into FSM? Um, so I guess I'll take that one, guys. Um, I, the answer to that is 
we really don't have anything that in when I say it doesn't install directly into FSM, we sit outside of FSM and uh, communicate through the XML services available. So um, if you were to do an on-premise install uh, from a resources requirement, it would be, it's, it's standard stuff, IIS and SQL Server. Um, and then we install a small service to facilitate the communication between the two, two services. The tab, I believe, was just a standard custom table that we created as part of the demo to get you know, to post that data. When you submit it, we store it in our product and then we also pass it off um, okay. through the SM, FSM poster service. Do you support uh, FSM on Azure? On Azure? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Because the cab install you mentioned like that and you, you mentioned on-premises installation. So I was curious because when you show the mobile form, you went into the Omnibyte form, Forms Pro, made your uh, changes, submitted it, the data went back to FSM, but you still hadn't done the save or next action on the the IFS or FSM mobile app. Correct. Okay. Because so that's you're what saying, you said. So you made a call back into using the endpoint to uh, XML submit, and that saved the data. Okay. Yes, that that's what posted the form data at that time. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yep. Other questions? If not, thank you for joining us. Um, next week's webinar is on the um, customer engagement, um, the CE portal that's coming out. Um, so chatbot, omni-channel information. So be sure to register and join us for that one. Um, watch for this presentation to be posted this afternoon. And um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to Mike or myself. Hey, I do Thank have one you. more question again, if that's okay. Certainly, go ahead. Um, so in, in looking at this, obviously there are certain things we can do in FSM mobile. Uh, you know, you can have workflows, you're, you're limited in some ways. Obviously the full features that the Forms Pro has, the number of the, the sections and, and the signatures and all that type of thing. So from an IFS perspective, Christine, are you looking at this as more of an extension of FSM Mobile? Correct. Okay. So for people who need more sophisticated forms than what can be done in FSM Mobile? Correct, because you can okay. do surveys within FSM, you can do attachments, but um, there is some number of you have wanted a more complex um, solution. Okay. Yeah, and, and another thing too, right, on top of FSM Mobile, the other thing too is we have had scenarios where there is, uh, let's say service division using FSM Mobile, but not everyone is. We can also go direct to back office and do those things as well for other types of users in an organization. Okay. So they can do lookups. They could you could still schedule dispatch, of course, and do lookups to see your assigned work and only see what you're assigned and then pull data in directly from the back office too. Okay, one more then one one of the advantages that FSM Mobile has, and especially for our work in sometimes we're remote areas, we may not always have cell service. And so the data is stored into what the local, you know, SQL Lite database or whatever on the Android device. Mm -hmm. And how does Forms Pro do that if they can't communicate to the endpoint to post the data? Yeah, that's a good question, Jim. Um so we do handle that offline mode. Um we do do a sync when you are online. Uh so if you, in, in that example you saw, you know, when it, it wasn't hitting the endpoint when we opened the form, it, it had already pulled that data down through a sync process to the device. Um, and that's what populated the lookup. So you know, obviously you need some, some form of connection in order to get the data on there. Um, yeah. But if you had to go offline after you had your, 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 your service work on your device, uh, you would still have it. You wouldn't need to be connected. So that sync service is part of what you mentioned with the IIS and the the cab to install that extra service. That's what's kind of doing that sort of thing. That yep, that's exactly right. So it's running in parallel then to the FSM mobile sync. Yes. Yep. Okay. Great. All Thank right. you. Yeah. So with that then, um, 